G'day Dave here and welcome to the 2nd of December, the second of our days looking at this Jesus Christmas plan. And uh, if you want to join with us over the next 24 days, you'll get to discover how God's plan for Christmas focuses on Jesus, that he is the reason for this Christmas season. But I want to reflect a little bit with you on December the 2nd, because December the 2nd is a it's really an anniversary date for me, uh, a strange anniversary. It goes back nine years to the 2nd of December in 2011. I'm sitting with friends in a cafe in Canberra and I start to feel my left side going numb. I had pain in my chest, I had pain in my back. And I mentioned this to my friends and one of them being a doctor wanted me to go straight to the hospital. See, he thought I was having a heart attack. But it turned out not to be any problem with my heart but there was a serious problem with my lungs. I had lung cancer and I was shocked to discover that because I wasn't a smoker. I thought you had to smoke to get lung cancer, but you really just need to have lungs and things going wrong with the cells in your body. And that was what was happening to me. And it had taken what I thought was my life away. I saw it really as a death sentence. I didn't expect to see the following Christmas. I was told I'd probably have 10 to 13 months to live. And one of the hard things about receiving a terminal diagnosis like that was all of the uh, dreams and hopes for the future being dashed. I really did want to be a grandfather one day. I, I wanted to have descendants. I wanted to have grandkids. And the thought of maybe playing with grandkids and then handing them back to the parents when they got a bit ratty was something that filled me with joy. And yet here was sadness that I would never experience that. Well, I am so thankful to God that here nine years later, I'm still alive after four years of chemotherapy. And I, I'm now back on a particular type of chemotherapy every day. It's keeping me alive. And the modern advancements in technology have given me extraordinary hope for life here and now. And in that time, I've had four grandchildren. I have a seven-year-old grandchild, a five-year-old, a three-year-old. Uh, and a little girl who's nearly two, and another one on the way. Uh, we're delighted to be able to welcome another little child into the extended McDonald family sometime early next year. And it, it really is a tremendous joy. They bring great excitement and laughter and fun and energy into our life. And there's something very special about having children, about having grandchildren, and for some people, it's great-grandchildren. Uh, like for my dad and mum, maybe even for some people, they get the privilege of five generations. Well, I want to tell you about a man who's important for understanding Christmas. And this man was promised by God that he would have descendants, that he'd have children, that he'd have grandchildren and great-grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren. And it would go all the way down to one of his great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great. And I don't know how many greats there would be, grandchild would be the saviour of the world. That is, it would be Jesus. And the man who's given this promise is Abraham. Uh, in Genesis, the, book of, uh, the first book of the Bible, in chapter 15 and verse 5, God takes Abraham outside and he gets him to look up into the sky and count the stars. Well, you can't really count them, but he was given this picture of how vast are the stars in the sky and God says to him so shall your offspring be that is you're going to have this many children and grandchildren and great and great 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 grandchildren in other words Abraham is going to be the father of a huge um, nation of people and there's going to be one very special man in and among his great 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 grandchildren and we discover that that is Jesus. And it's through this man that God is going to bring about a great blessing. Uh, good things are going to happen to Abraham's family, but also to all of the world who put their trust in God. And we are told that it's through Abraham putting his trust in God and believing God. In verse 6, it says, Abraham believed the Lord and God credited it to him as righteousness. See, because Abraham trusted God that he would have a great family, God called Abraham righteous. And if we want to know God, and if we want to be part of God's family, 
then like Abraham, what we need to do is put our trust in God. In fact, to put our trust in Abraham's great and however many greats, I don't know, grandson, Jesus, who is a descendant of Abraham, who comes to bring the blessing that God promised. And we celebrate him this Christmas. So friends, as you go outside and you see the many stars in the sky, Remember that you can be a part of God's promised blessing to Abraham by putting your trust in Jesus this Christmas and being part of God's family.